Hey, so this is Overcoming Hate Setback Series. Uh, recognize the hater early and put in sustained distance between you and the hater. The best example of this uh, that I wish uh, as an individual and entertainer he had had real revelation about is Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye is the best example of this because his father hated him early. You know, like we tell the uh, the victim of domestic violence, right, to see them early, or we or we use today Maya Angelou's uh, quote. If you uh, what's the quote? Uh, when people show you who they are, believe them, and we ignore that guidance, continue in the relationship. And because we think we're going to fix it. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Sometimes, I think the majority of the times, we don't want to start over. We're already invested. We're already in the situation. Why don't we just come together and work it out? And we stay in that frame of mind. Because we frame, we don't frame the person, we don't frame the hater as a problem. We frame the hater as something that can be solved so we 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 tend to be solution oriented people so this hate that this person has it has there's no it, it it doesn't make any sense for the person hey let me show you who i am i'm really a nice person i'm really this i'm really that i'm really that you don't have to hate me it this kind of reminds me of rose in the golden girls on the golden girls and there was a lady uh, who had a beautiful tree in front of her house, and she wanted to have it cut down. And Rose kept trying to appeal to the lady. She went to uh, the city council. She did all that she could to try to get the lady to understand that this is a, a, um, um, a tree that has been around for hundreds of years. Why are you trying to cut it down? And so everything kind of comes to a head at the city council meeting and the woman yells out, you know, I don't want the tree, you can do this or whatever. And and it just, it, it does something in Rose uh, that she gets up and goes to where the woman is sitting and said, basically, I'm sick of you, I'm tired of you or whatever. We're going to have our say. And if you don't like it, you can drop dead. And then the woman drops dead, right? Uh, and th of course, that's for comedic effect. But Rose going after the woman and trying to convince her and, and trying to to uh, be sort of, you know, diplomatic before that city council meeting is Rose trying to say, I know this situation can be resolved. Maybe if we could cut some of the limbs, cut some of the branches, cut some of the Cut some of it out so it doesn't obstruct your view. Anything. Can we can we sit down and reason together? Can we sit down and have a conversation uh, more than you just saying, let's cut down a tree? And when you think about that image, then think about any parent-child relationship where the child is being abused and has been abused for so long and the child has no way out of the situation but then when the child gets grown and goes off and accomplishes uh, uh, some things on their own they always have a tendency to turn uh, to try to come back and reason with the person who hate who hated them or who who continues to hate them they always try to come back and let me just let's just reason this out i know i know what we had going on was uh in childhood was a struggle sometimes maybe I was bad and you had to whip me and all that kind of, okay, I get that. But we're all adults now. Let's sit down and reason together and, and, and have a conversation. Let's have an adult relationship. But when a hater hates you, especially in a parent-child situation like Marvin Gaye Sr. to Marvin Gaye Jr., it doesn't matter what you do. Marvin Gaye was loved by many. He was a global phenomenon. Uh, people were truly hurt by his death. They didn't even know that they, that he had that kind of relationship with his father. Not many people. 
and um, um, he he bought his uh, family a house. Um, he gave his mother and father money or whatever. Uh, he brought them on stage. He did all different types of stuff to show his love, meaning that his his love is a solution to his hate, or or at least that's what he thought. His love, the 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 demonstration and consistent demonstration of love is a solution to his hate. But the father hated him from the beginning. The father was never going to accept him. Never. The father, from what I learned on uh, on on a documentary, the mother had a child prior um, from a different marriage. I can't remember. And um, Marvin Gaye Sr. said that that her son couldn't come live with them or something. So she gave the son son to um, her sister to raise. So then they get married. And then she gets pregnant with Marvin Gaye Jr. And uh, the, the father uh, says he doesn't believe the son is his. So he kept this, this certain narrative of no responsibility. I'm not taking any responsibility. I will marry you, make you whole, but I'm not going to be responsible for the child. So Marvin Gaye Jr., uh, he developed a close relationship with his mother. So during the event of his death, the father provokes the, uh, the the situation in the house, creates a toxic environment, and I believe to get at Marvin to get him to leave. He had come, he had been struggling, I guess, with drugs, um, a divorce or something like that, and he decided to come back and live at the house. And you know you can't have two male egos in the same house, right? Whether they are father and son or just two regular men. And so I believe when you are an abuser, abusers always either groom you for abuse or they provoke a situation to abuse you. And the situation, the father was was um, irritating and frustrating the mother Um and like clockwork, she goes to her son for help. And so the son goes out to have it out with his father. And then the father returns to get the gun that the son gave him uh, for protection, returns to get the gun to shoot the son. And a lot of times people look at the situation as uh, at that end of the life uh, type decision he made that had. Marvin Gaye Jr. not tried to fight his father, he would be alive today. No, I believe it's from the very beginning, the belief system of the father not accepting the son. And and that continued, uh, and, and that's interpreted as hate, of course, and that continued, uh, that hate continued to develop in itself all the way up until that death. In other words, that father again was never going to accept the son meaning uh he projected his hate and he he saw his son as a problem and the son was never going to be accepted and he projected his love and saw that the whole toxic situation and relationship could be resolved with love and that's why you see him singing love songs and things like that that's in his heart. So one person had hate in his heart and one person had love in his heart. And the only way that you could likely change the situation is if you put distance between you two. Because if you, if your presence coming into the house uh, frustrates all the demons in that house, uh, it will likely be a situation where where the demons are going to overtake you because there is no process with the person who hates you. They haven't sat down to grieve over their hate. They haven't sat down to challenge it as a belief system. They haven't sat down to think about it and reflect on it and journal and cry about it and do all that they can to try to resolve it in their heart. If they haven't, if they are a ball of hate in a body, there's nothing you can do 
um, to show show them different. You're just going to have to put distance. Uh, Marvin Gaye didn't necessarily need to go and live in his parents' house. He had a brother who had a house right on the side of the parents. He could have gone over there. So on some level, Rob, I mean, did I say Robin? Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, he did not necessarily have to go to um, his parents' house. He's a grown-up. He could have gone to, to his brother's house, which was on the side of the parents' house. And and so uh, he could have worked something out with his brother. I don't know if his brother was married, but he could have worked something out. That could create some distance. But I think in returning to the home, I think something stirred up on the inside of him as he thought about the relationship that he had with his father and that there was something that that he, that he was, not only was the father looking for an opportunity to confront the son, I feel like the son was looking for an opportunity to confront the father. Now, did, uh, did it have to result in death? No. But his last words were, I, um, something to the fact is, uh, I couldn't do it myself. Um, I was trying to get him to do it or something like that. I couldn't do it myself. Meaning that, that he couldn't uh, commit suicide himself. His, his father killing him solved the problem. So in other words, the father who decides to go get the gun and shoots the son, uh, he has resolved his hate in a sense. The person who who is a representative or, 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 or a target for hate, he resolved it. And the person who was hated, he found a way to resolve the hate too. But nothing changed in the family. There was no love that uh, came as a result. So if you have a situation with a family member uh, that is provoking, who is provoking you to anger, that could be a mother, a father, brother, sister, you need to put distance between them. They're very dangerous because they're dangerous uh, simply because they're not interested in, in hearing uh, uh, any difference about the situation. Just just they're not interested in seeing you differently. They project you as a problem that they got to resolve. And don't think for one moment they won't pick up a gun or shoot you. I mean, uh, shoot you and kill you and set you up for murder or something like that. They will do it if they if. If problem is all they see in their head about you and not solution, they got to get the problem out of their head. It's like a fantasy, right? All they see is one thing about you and they got to get it out of their head. And so recognize the hater early and put and sustain some distance between you and the hater. That means you can need, you may need to live out of town or you can live in the same town, one in one area and and another in another area, and don't go to family reunions. Don't go to uh, certain, um, you know, get-togethers. Don't go to holiday, um, uh, holiday meetings. Don't do that. You may have to put some emotional, social, financial distance between you and that hater because that person is dangerous. So this is um, overcoming hate setback series, recognize the hater early, put and sustain distance between you and the hater. Visit ReginaYFavors.com for uh, tips. Thank you very much for listening.